to the New Yankee workshop. With every mail comes a request for us to build an infant's cradle. Well, we're finally going to build one next, right here on the New Yankee workshop. The New Yankee workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Good morning, Parson. Good to see you again. Yeah. It's been a while. Come on in. Thank you. It has been a while, indeed. And I hope his feet are clean. This is not the first time we've been in the parsonage here at Old Sturbridge Village. Remember the time we came and looked at this piece to get inspiration for a corner cupboard? And then that was that time up in the attic that we found the antique rocking horse, which soon became the most popular project of the New Yankee Workshop. But I've never taken you to this room, the kitchen. Wonderful big fireplace, a hutch. Look at this tavern table. But what I want to show you today is this cradle. You know, it's ironic that in today's age of gadgets and modern devices, that there's nothing that soothes a baby more than being rocked to sleep in a cradle. Let's take a look at how this one is made. The sides appear to be one wide pine board joined at the corners with a simple rabbit joint and nails. The rockers, if I look inside, I can see they're just joined with some nails. Now here's a feature that I'm told is a bit rare, a hood. And look at this finish, very unusual. It's a painted finish. I guess what's trying to happen here is the pine is made to look like mahogany. I like the proportions of this piece. And I think if we do it correctly, it could easily become an heirloom. Well, here's our version of that antique cradle we saw at Old Sturbridge Village. I hope the babies enjoy it. I made a couple changes. I chose to build mine from cherry instead of pine, because cherry is a little more durable, and it looks better and better with age. I chose to join the rocker to the base with a sliding dovetail joint instead of just nailing it. And the corners are assembled with what's known as a box joint. Very strong, and it looks good. Now, if you'd like to build one of these for your home, a measured drawing is available with the materials list, and you'll hear more about that before this program ends. Before we start any woodworking, I want to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Here I have some boards that I want to glue up into some panels. These two will become the footboard, these three will become the headboard, and these two will be the base of the cradle. Now this isn't a great looking piece of cherry, but it is the base. It will be concealed by some bedding. I'm most interested in the two outside edges looking good because that's the part that will be seen. I don't want to just glue these together as they are. You can see that this edge is not very straight. In fact, the boards rock on each other. If I just use glue and clamp pressure to squeeze them together, it's likely that the joint may fail later. I want to true these edges up, and the best tool to do that is the joiner. Now that's what I want. That's going to give me a good glue joint. Glue alone is probably enough to hold these joints together, but biscuits will make it that much stronger. First, what I'll do is apply some glue to the joint with this little roller device. Gives me a nice even coat. Then I'll use this glue bottle with a special tip to inject some glue into the slot of the biscuit. Now I roll some glue onto the adjacent piece and put some glue in the slots. Next, we slip it together. And finally, a little clamp pressure. Now the trick here is to clamp it without squeezing all the glue out of the joint, just enough to bring it together. 
And finally, I like to take a damp sponge and wipe off the excess fluid. He's ready to operate. But he's no ordinary doctor. He's HGTV's Ron Hazelton, the house doctor. I'm ready to start the surgery, sir. This doctor makes house calls with a style all his own. Ron Hazelton, the house doctor. Tonight at 6 on HGTV. Whoa, remember this place in those midnight snacks? Hi, Indeed. Let's have two dogs with the works. Hey, I can't have one of those in that. Oh, watching your figure. No, I didn't take my Pepsi at AC, and it's too late now. Take my Tagamit. You can eat now. Tagamit introduces a better way to avoid heartburn. Not before, not after, now. Now you can take Tagamit right when you're going to eat and still prevent heartburn. Mindy? You too. Back again? Mindy! With Tagamit, you can eat like a kid again. Food Network. Something different, something fresh, and a place to share it. People everywhere are connecting with Food Network to satisfy their curiosity, share real stories, and experience the unexpected. Food Network showcases the heartful, the artful, and the eclectic with programs and personalities that inspire and inform. Food Network, television that's full of flavor. If you don't get Food Network, call your local cable operator or satellite provider for details. Here I'm laying out the side pieces for the cradle. Each side has a long piece for the bottom and a shorter piece for the side of the hood. I've jointed the edges where the hood piece meets the side, but I don't want to glue them together right now because they'd be too awkward to handle. The first thing I want to do is put a bevel along the bottom edge of the long piece. And that's because the sides of the cradle flare out at six degrees. And in order to have this bottom edge fit tightly to the base, I have to bevel it at six degrees. The next thing to do is take these long pieces and cross cut them to length, beveling each end at five degrees. So I put a little witness mark to make sure I bevel it in the correct direction. Over here at the table saw, I've set up my miter gauge at a five degree setting and now I'll just run the piece through the saw. Now I'll mark it for length along the top edge, 36 and 5 eighths, and cross cut it at 5 degrees. The upper piece also gets a cross cut at 5 degrees along the back edge, but at the front edge, I'll make the cut parallel. Now I'll measure it at 9 and a 16th along the bottom edge and cut the front at an angle. To make the cut, I want to move my miter gauge to the miter slot on the other side of the saw blade, and that'll give me a parallel cut. Take note here that the top of the side is beveled to pick up the roof. That bevel is 18 and a half degrees. Next, I'll use this poster board pattern of the side cutout to lay out the small side pieces. So you can see that the operation of cutting out this piece is much easier to do at the bandsaw before the pieces are glued together. I'm going to use these little gluing blocks because my edges are beveled and I don't want the clamps to damage them. The footboard and the headboard flare out just like the sides. In order for the bottom edge to fit the base properly, it has to be beveled at about four degrees.
Next, I want to cut the headboard to the correct height. Because it tips back from the roof, the top edge will have to be beveled at four degrees. Next, I want to make the cuts along the edge of the headboard. That would be difficult to do with the table saw with the miter gauge because the piece is just too big. So I've clamped a straight edge down, just a scrap piece of plywood. I've set the straight edge back from my layout line equal to the distance from the edge of the saw base to the saw blade. You'll notice that the corners of the headboard have been cut at an angle for the hood. That cut has to be back cut at a slight angle, just as I did with this horizontal section. Once again, I'm using a straight edge clamp and my circular saw, which I've actually tipped to four degrees. Because the blank for the footboard is smaller, I was able to go back to the miter gauge, set at the proper angle to cut the sides. The arch at the top is another job for the band saw. Now I'm ready to start milling the box joints, or the finger joints. To do that, I'm going to use this fixture over here. And it comes with a variety of templates. This template is for half-inch, half-line dovetails. The one I've installed in the jig is for half-inch box joints. There's a clamping device which holds the stock in place. I've mounted the headboard properly and adjusted the jig. I'm going to use my router, which is equipped with a 5 8 inch collar, and a half-inch straight-cutting bit. The idea is just to let the collar follow the jig. It works great. Watch. Now I'll just flip the piece around and mill the other edge. In order to cut the finger joints and the side pieces, I first have to do some layout. Here's the headboard with the outside face up. And here's one of the side panels with its outside face up. What I want to do is line up the cut edge along the notches of the finger joints and bring these two points together. And by sighting down, I can put a pencil mark at the edge of this first finger joint. And that'll show me where I want to remove material. Now I slip the side panel into the jig with the outside face facing out and align the pencil marks. I don't want them on each side of this finger. I want to slide it over so that it aligns with the overcut area in the backer board. This will line it up exactly where I want to remove the material. Now for a trial fit. Slip it together. Okay, that's going to be good. The same methods will be used to mill the other three corners. These are cobalt tools, the finest mechanics tools you can buy in any store. They've got contoured handles for a better grip. And the K-drive that grabs fasteners on the sides, not the corners, which means more torque, less rounding, and less slippage. So cobalt tools can stand up to anything. Where I'm standing, that's a very good thing. Cobalt, setting the standard in mechanics tools. Made in the USA and guaranteed forever. At Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse and online. Beautiful gardens require real effort. But gardeners everywhere have discovered they can work the soil without the toil with the lightweight, easy-to-handle Mantis Tiller Cultivator. The Mantis weighs only 20 pounds, but digs in at 240 revolutions a minute. And optional attachments make it a versatile wonder. Here's the offer. Purchase a brand new Mantis, use it for a year, and if you don't love it, send it back and we'll 
return your money. For free information about the Mantis Tiller, call 1-800-495-4051. Where in the world should you be investing now? There's opportunity all around the globe. Overseas markets can be rewarding, but there are always risks. You need a guide who knows the way. If you want to invest in foreign markets, you have to be in those markets. A potential there. We think our global research capability gives our investors a real advantage. Find Prudential's investment know-how all around the world and right around the corner. I know what you're thinking. 1010 10 this and 1010 10 that. You got tens and tens coming out of your ears. You're confused. I understand that. I'm confused. Well, here's a number that can actually clear things up. 1010-ATT-00. It's for directory assistance. They can help you find any number in America, even if you're a little confused. 1010-ATT-00. It's the only number you need to know. Try it free in February. Now I'm confused again. Question. Why? In nature, all waste is recycled, and it's this process that led to the development of Envirolat, the world's finest composting toilet systems. Using patented automatic aeration, Envirolat efficiently reduces and recycles waste into garden soil. Simple to use, totally sanitary, and odor-free, Envirolat composting toilet systems offer you a better economical and environmental solution. Envirolat is your year-round answer for cottage or home and many other applications. Available in waterless and low-water models, and your choice of non-electric 12-volt battery or energy-efficient 110-volt electric. Call for your free video and information kit on our complete Envirolet line. Waterless self-contained, waterless remote, and low-water remote systems. Envirolet meets or exceeds product and performance standards and is backed by a lifetime warranty and toll-free nationwide customer support. Call for your free video and information kit and discover Envirolet composting toilet systems today. Before I do any assembly, I want to round over the edges at the top of the footboard, along the sideboard, and up through the hood area. To do that, all I need is my router, which is equipped with a 3 8 inch radius round over bit. Now's about the best time to sand any inside surfaces of the cradle. It would be very difficult to do it after it was glued up. Before I apply any glue, I'm placing a piece of masking tape along the inside edge of every corner. Makes it a lot easier to clean up the glue later. Now let's see if we can fit it all together. Now I'm just gonna put the footboard in place as a spacer, no glue yet we get the headboard clamped up. Now that's pretty good across the back. Let's see if we can pull the joint a little tighter along the side. With the headboard clamped in place, I'm going to use this scrap of wood, just as I did up here, as a temporary spacer while I remove the footboard and glue it up and clamp it the same way. Now, before the glue dries, I want to remove the masking tape. I've sized the bottom of the cradle. Now I want to take out the unevenness at the joint. I'll use my surface planer, removing just enough to make it smooth. The top corner of the bottom has a slight chamfer all the way around. I can do that with this chamfering bit, which has a ball bearing that guides it around the edge of the board. Now, as I showed you earlier, the rocker fits into a sliding dovetail joint. The rocker is held in place with only one screw, no glue, because I want the pieces to expand and contract freely. First, I want to cut the dovetail slot. To do that, I've placed a straight edge clamp on my bottom piece. 
I'm using my router with a three-quarter inch dovetail bit set to the depth of three-eighths of an inch. Here's a blank from which I will mill one of the rockers. I need to make a dovetail on the edge that'll fit into the slot that I just cut. To do that, I've installed the same dovetailing bit in my router table and adjusted the fence so that if I push a piece through from each side, I end up with the profile that I need. Now I just lay it out with another poster board pattern and cut it on the bandsaw. Now with my 3 8 round over bit, I'll just ease the edges. Well, that should do it for today. We'll finish this project with no problem in a couple hours tomorrow. Order a home video of the project you've just seen Norm build, complete with a measured drawing and materials list. Call toll-free 1-800-892-0110. The price is $24.95 plus shipping and handling. Get the measured drawing alone for only $10. The number again is 1-800-892-0110. The co-op of growers who make Florida's natural premium juice are like a family with a long lineage and an extensive family tree. As you can see, their nursery's always full, but then they do have the best daycare around. Sure, the folks who make Florida's natural see things a little differently. After all, they own the land, they own the trees, they own the company. Taste the difference it makes. Florida's natural, not from concentrate, premium juice. Start something special. In a car commercial, you expect to see some fine print. Well, here's some of the finest dark print you'll ever see. Right now, get 2.9% financing on all 99 Oldsmobiles. Start something special at your Oldsmobile dealer now. Every day, more people are choosing Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. And here's why. A place where customer service isn't just here. It's everywhere. And there are more than 40,000 items in stock. I know. I stock them. Our clean, wide aisles. Guaranteed low prices. We check the competition. And our friendly, knowledgeable salespeople will help answer all your questions. Can you match this paint? Four screen, play checks, semi-gloss. You're good. When it comes to home improvement, Lowe's knows. I take Zoborax to treat my genital herpes outbreaks. But five times a day for five days? That's 25 pills. Who has time for that? Not me. I have a life. There's got to be an easier way. There is. There's Valtrex. It's just twice a day for five days. Call 1-800-311-8080 for a free trial coupon and product information about Valtrex. Remember... There is no cure for genital herpes, and even with treatment, it may be possible to spread herpes to others. With Valtrex, if your immune system is not normal because of advanced HIV disease, bone marrow, or kidney transplant, make sure your doctor knows this to avoid a potentially serious complication. The most common side effects with Valtrex and Zovirax are headache and nausea. Product information is also available through your doctor or pharmacist. Valtrex, just two pills a day. I can do that. Ask your doctor about Valtrex, an easier way to treat genital herpes outbreaks. Well, I got started this morning by removing the sides of the cradle from the clamps. Then I sanded all the box joints smooth and even. Now I'm just using my low angle block plane to trim the bottom edges of the cradle so that I'll have a perfectly flat surface. Now I'll just place the bottom on the cradle sides, clamp it in place, and mark out some holes so I can attach it with screws.
Now I want to remove the bottom from the sides and elongate the holes that go into the footboard and the headboard from the top to allow for expansion and contraction. Well, let's take another look at the prototype. The next piece that I want to work on is this piece right here. It joins the side of the hood and supports the roof. I've taken a piece of cherry and laid out all the angles that I need cut. Over here at my power miter box, I could set the angle. And this is where this laser line comes in real handy. Just bring it over to the line, lock it in position, and make the cut. Next, I'll make the cuts that follow the slope of the roof. Well, that takes care of cutting the curve. I'll smooth it up at the drum sander. The glue and the biscuit will reinforce this joint. So with it clamped in place, I'll set it aside to dry and we'll mill some thin pieces of cherry for the roof. This three inch wide resawing blade in my bandsaw is the perfect tool for cutting thin strips of wood like these. takes care of smoothing up all the pieces. Let's take a look at how the roof boards intersect. The bottom board comes up and is overlapped by the top board, which means they have to be cut at a very sharp angle. To do that, I want to use my table saw. But that means I have to hold the board vertical and slide it through. And it has to cut to nothing, which means I should slide the rip fence right up against the blade. And that leaves the possibility of the piece being pulled down through the insert. So what I'm going to do is use this jig, which slides on the rip fence and makes it very easy to hold pieces in the vertical position. I can slide it right up against my blade, not worrying about damaging the fence. And because I can hold it steady as I slide it through, it won't fall in the slot. Well, that about does it. A little final sanding, and this piece will be ready for the finishing room. Well, we've found from experience that the only way to treat cherry wood is to put on an oil finish. Now, this is a Danish oil finish. I'm applying a liberal amount with a brush. Several coats should do the job. But before the baby gets in it, we'll let it cure for at least 30 to 45 days. And there you have it, the cherry cradle. The wood will get richer with age, but it's ready for a newborn infant right now.